Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at a particular workflow that actually came to me as a question on social media. I get questions every single day. How do you do this? Can this be done? So forth and so on. And in most cases I don't really even get a chance to answer a lot of those. But sometimes the question not only gets answered, but it turns into a tutorial. And that's exactly what happened today. So I got a question a couple of days ago from uh, Jacinda on Instagram. And she asked, is there a way to do a complete mobile workflow for Adobe Stock contributors? Now, Adobe Stock is, is a way for you as a photographer, as a graphic designer, as a person that can create content to make extra money, another revenue stream from your photography, from your graphic design, by submitting things to Adobe Stock. Now, traditionally, I've shown this many times, but I've always shown it from the desktop. I've never shown it from mobile only. Now, of course, we've got these great uh, mobile phones that can capture high res, 12 megapixels on up, uh, raw files, JPEGs, so forth and so on, uh, iOS and Android. That's great. And of course, if you're going to shoot, you know, that you're pretty much already working in mobile. You're shooting in mobile and then you can go from there. But what if you got one of these? What if you've got a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, or some other device that has a memory card? Now what? That's what we're going to talk about. That was the specific question. If I wanted to do it from a DSLR, how will I do it? All right, so I'm going to put my DSLR down. I've got the memory card so that you see there's nothing up my sleeve and I'm going to take the memory card into Apple's latest and greatest SD card reader or card adapter um, for iOS devices. Now when this originally came out it was only for iPads but I just tested it. It does work on the latest and greatest iPhones too. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the card so it's just sitting in there and now I'm going to take my iPad Pro and I'm just going to go ahead and take the card reader and plop it right into the lightning port. Plug it right in. Now in a few seconds, that'll bring up the importer, as it just did. And it's showing me everything that's on the card. Now, here's the, here's the deal. Those are raw files. I didn't. These are images that I shot in Iceland last year. I shot in RAW. Never thought about capturing in JPEG, because I don't. These are actual RAW files on the card. So um, iOS supports RAW, but Adobe not only supports the RAW files, but they support editing and working with those RAW files. So we're going to work on that workflow as well. Now I can pick any one of these landscapes to bring in, but what makes a stock image more compelling is usually if there are people involved or lifestyle or something out of the ordinary. Now while that's a beautiful picture of a duck or whatever, creature that is. I'm not a wildlife photographer. There's probably a million ducks on Adobe stock. And while those are great, fantastic waterfalls, there's probably a million photos of waterfalls. But I've got a picture of a mountain with two people walking. That's not a common thing on Adobe stock. So whenever you can involve people, that's great. Now this one, the one with the green check, I've already imported. So I'm going to import the one next to it. And I'm just going to tap. And of course, I can, I can tap on as many photos as I want. I can say import all. But I'm just going to use one for the sake of time in this tutorial. So we're just going to go ahead and hit import one of those. I don't want to import all. Just import the selected. Now, once that's done importing, it will get a green check mark. And I'm going to get this little dialog box that says, hey, do you want to keep it on the card? Yeah, keep it on the card. Don't delete anything. So keep it on the card in case I need it again. Now there's no eject, just go ahead and unplug the card. And I'm going to go ahead and pop out of uh, the Apple uh, importer. Now I can put this away, but uh, just, just so you know that it does in fact work, I'm going to pick up my iPhone 10 and I'm going to take the same card, same card reader and plug it into the lightning port of the iPhone 10. And oh, by the way, let me share it with you so you can see it. There we go. So our importer comes in. It reads the same images. I can import the same images. So this workflow would even work on a smartphone. I'm not gonna do it on a smartphone today because I've got a bigger screen. I've got a bigger iPad to, to work on, but you could do everything I'm about to do on your iPhone as well. So that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect so we don't need to watch that anymore. Let's go back to the iPad, disconnect the card reader, put the card reader down. 
And uh, just for the sake of organization, I'm gonna move the iPad back over a bit. And now let's go to work. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do, now that the image is on the device, it's sitting in the uh, internal memory of the iPad Pro, I'm gonna go ahead and launch my Adobe folder and launch Lightroom CC. In Lightroom CC, I've already got an album called Adobe Stock Potential. You can see it in the upper left corner. And you can see that there are some, uh, raw, some raw files, some DNGs. These all, except for the first two, all of these came from my computer. But now I'm gonna go ahead and tap the Add button in the bottom right. And I'm gonna go ahead and go camera roll because that's where it put the raw file that it brought in from the card. And once I get to the camera roll, I can go ahead and tap on that image in the upper left corner, which you can even see it says raw in, in, right on the image. Tap on the one in the upper left corner and we're gonna go ahead and add that one photo. So that will add the one photo to this album and it is there now ready for me to work on. So it's this third one. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start to work on it. Now, by the way, when I'm not working on it, you can see that it is uploading. So it's syncing that full res, full uh, you know, .NEF or CR2, whatever your raw format is, up to Lightroom in the cloud. And of course, then the raw file would be available on my desktop. It would be available on my other computer, my laptop. It'll be available on my iPhone. It'll be available on the web. It'll be available everywhere. So um, the raw file is the raw file. So even if I did delete it off the card, I truly have it. It is being backed up as we speak. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and go into it. Now, the first thing I would do from an editing standpoint is I don't, um, I don't want any lens distortion or anything like that going on. Now, I have this turned on by default to automatically enable lens in, uh, correction upon import, but if you didn't, you can just go ahead and enable that. That will basically take any bowing or bending out of the image and remove any uh, lens vignetting. The next thing I'm gonna do is go to my profiles in the upper right-hand corner, and I'm gonna use the Adobe Raw Profiles because these are brand new and there's one updated for Adobe or for landscapes. It's called Adobe Landscape. So if I tap on that one, that starts to bring out the colors of this raw file, the colors that were there already. So again, raw is unprocessed. We're starting to process it. And this gives me a much better starting point than what I had. The next thing we're gonna do is go to light. And I can start adjusting everything manually based on what I normally do, but now I'm kind of spoiled. I get in the habit of letting Lightroom start me off with the Auto Tone button, which is machine learning AI based. And then if I don't like anything, I can just adjust those sliders that I want to either alter or adjust further. So let's go ahead and Auto Tone this image. That gave me even a better starting point. Now, there's some things I don't agree with. For example, I want my contrast increased, not decreased. I want to bring down my highlights a little bit more. And everything else looks pretty good. The exposure looks pretty good. Maybe bring that back up just a hair. And now I can go ahead and go down to color. I can add a little bit more vibrance to it. Now, I don't want to over-process this image because I am submitting it to stock. Let me go back to light one more time. And let me bring up the shadows one more time. And... Um, effects and we'll just add a tad bit of dehaze that's it don't want to go too far with this image because again uh it's a raw file and in some cases you you want them to be able to use the image that they download and just plop it right into their ad campaign and sometimes people want to process it further on their own so i don't i try not to overdo the ones try not to overdo any but especially the ones that i'm going to submit to stock okay so now at that point let's say i'm done with my editing of course i could crop it i could do anything else I want to do to it, but I'm going to go ahead and say I'm done at this point. So now I'm going to go ahead and just check to make sure that it is synced and backed up, and it is. So it was backing up the raw file in the background, and it synced the edits as soon as I came out of the editing mode. And now I'm done with Lightroom. I can go ahead and get out of Lightroom. Because there are two mobile apps from Adobe that let you submit to stock. One is called Adobe Photoshop Fix. It is free. The other one is called Adobe Photoshop Mix. It is also free. So I, even though I don't need to do any further editing, I still gotta open up the image in those apps to do submissions because Lightroom doesn't do those submissions at this time. So let's go ahead and open up. I'll use Photoshop Fix. And uh, when I go ahead and go to Photoshop Fix, I'm gonna go ahead and choose to um, add from Lightroom. 
because it can see my Lightroom albums. And there's a um, one called Adobe Stock Potential and that those new images are all the way at the bottom. And I believe it is this first one over here. Let's go ahead and open that one up. Now I'm gonna get a dialog box letting me know, or maybe I don't get it anymore because I already acknowledged it, but it's letting me know it's using the cloud to render the full resolution image that it's going to open up and show me here in Lightroom CC. So we'll give it a second to do that. All right, and once it's done processing and bringing down that full resolution image, it opens it up in Photoshop Fix. Now, in Photoshop Fix, it's great. I got the crop tool, I got adjustments, I've got liquify, I've got the healing brush, I've got all the Photoshop type of retouching stuff that I want. So for example, just for kicks, if I wanted to go into the healing brush, and remove that little light brown squiggly line. I can use my healing brush and do that and get rid of it. And it will just heal that right out of the image. So you do have the ability to remove distracting objects. I kind of like that. I'm not going to remove that one, but maybe I want to get rid of that. Maybe I want to get rid of this. Basically any distractions from my image uh, because I want people to focus on the two people walking. All right, so now that I've done that, I've basically gotten rid of any distractions. I've used any other editing capabilities I've got here. The next thing I can do is share it. And when I tap share in the upper right corner, there is the contribute to Adobe stock. So that's a feature of Photoshop fix and mix. So if I say contribute to Adobe stock, it says, hey, you want to upload this image? Yes. Go ahead and do that and i have a pretty fast internet connection so it will optimize it upload it and uh, once it's done there will be one more thing we have to do and that's basically the metadata made it <laughs> the metadata process all right so on um, the sharing looks like it is just completing and it is done so I will go ahead and say, yep, got it. I know I need to go and finish that process. So let's go ahead and pop out of uh, Photoshop Fix. Let's go to my web browser. And if I refresh, I'm on contributor.stock.adobe.com in the uploaded files area. If I refresh, it should now show me the new file and I'm ready to finish the process. So the first thing is, File type, it's a photo. Second thing, category. Yeah, travel's fine. Um, I could use, you know, maybe landscapes might be better. Uh, next one, title. <clears throat> this is what you actually want to title the photo because it does not know, it can't read your mind. So two people walking in the mountains. All right, so um, I've got that. Let's put the keyboard away. Now, the next thing is it's auto-generated keywords. So it used Adobe Sensei to figure out what was going on in this image. And it's given me uh, 25 keywords to begin with. Now, of course, sometimes artificial intelligence isn't perfect. It does not guess correctly. So this is not the Alps. I don't want to mislead anybody. Uh, so I'm going to remove that keyword. Yep, everything else looks pretty good pretty good it's not switzerland <laughs> it's not italy um, but it is iceland so i can go ahead and put that keyword in so in case people are specifically looking for shots of iceland uh, i can put that one in so i can add keywords remove keywords change keywords uh, couple uh, walking uh, so far and so on. So you basically get the keywords the way you want. You can also change the order. So I'm going to put couple up to the top and I'm going to put walking up to the top. And let's go back up to the top and see what we have. Couple, walking, mountain. We'll put mountain at the top. So mountain, walking, couple, snow, landscape. Perfect. All right. So now that I've got the keywords in the right order. I've got my title in. I've got my categories chosen. The last thing I have to tell it is whether or not there are any recognizable people or property. We, they're, I don't know those people. They have their backs to us, so I don't have to worry about it because I can't recognize who they are anyway. So I'm going to say no, but if it was someone like a portrait, you're doing portrait photography, you're doing people, recognizable people in a crowd, whatever it is, then you would have to say yes and upload the model releases for those people as well, which there's even a digital way to do that, even on mobile. So you can either upload a JPEG of your model release, the one you always use, or 
as long as you got it witnessed. Or you can use um, Adobe Sign to send out a model release to the people that need to sign it and they can send it back as part of the process. But I can go ahead and just tap no, meaning that there are no recognizable people or property. So I get my green button. I get the one I would normally get on my desktop. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say submit. Am I sure? Yes. And then if I go ahead and submit this, it'll put it into the queue for the Adobe Stock moderators to look at, approve, make sure it's the right quality, make sure it's you know the right image, so forth and so on, make sure you own the rights to it, make sure you got a model release or if you need one or, or not. Basically, they check everything. And then if they approve it, within anywhere from 24 hours to a week, your images are available for sale on Adobe Stock under your account. So this is free to do. Everything I just showed you, with the exception of Lightroom CC, is a free process. Um, and you have the ability to um, generate income from your photography. So those images, along with the other 31 that I already submitted um, from other shoots, are ready to go and be approved. So with that said, that is the mobile workflow for Adobe Stock Contributors. Lightroom CC for working with the RAW files. If you just had a JPEG, you can go straight to Photoshop Fix or Mix and submit it. If you shot your image on your phone, you can go straight to Photoshop Fix or Mix and su submit it. So um, the only reason I use Lightroom CC is because I wanted to fully take advantage of the RAW file that I shot. And the RAW file is now backed up and available on my, my other devices, complete with the edits that I can keep or change. So with that said, thank you for asking that question. Uh, I enjoyed exploring this workflow and making sure it all worked. And... Uh, Thank you. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, everybody. Take care.